Christians are often told to relax, sit back, because the battle is the Lord's. That scripture is found in the Old Testament. We're going to look at it. Does it apply today? Why is this happening to me? I thought God was supposed to protect me. You hear that often. Many leaders in the body of Christ declare that the battle is the Lord's and that our job is just to believe and trust. Now others contend that we are to be actively involved in fighting the enemy. What is the truth? Christians face an ongoing challenge when applying Old Testament scriptures this side of the cross. Facts that were accepted and understood before Christ must be scrutinized, I believe, through the prism of Christ's victory on the cross. Much changed there. The Holy Spirit now indwells us and does not merely rest upon us. Christ's church has been given high authority and power here on earth, including healing the sick and driving out demons, to list only a couple. Of course, that's in Mark 16, 17. His divine power has given all that we need to lead a godly and blessed life, 2 Peter 1, 3. Now, the warfare detailed in 2 Chronicles 20, verses 1 to 29, sets the stage for Joshua's famous declaration. An alliance of Moab, Ammon, and others had invaded Judah. It was a matter of mathematics that enemy far outnumbered the people of Judah. There seemed to be only one possible outcome, which was the defeat of Judah. Now, jumping up, Jehoshaphat stood in the temple and prayed. There was only one place to turn. Sometimes life is like that. And concerning death and eternity, God is the only one who can make a difference. The Lord responded through his prophet Jehiazel and said, Listen, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. That's in Second Chronicles 20, verse 15. Yes, here was a case where the battle had to be the Lord's, or it would be lost. However, that the battle was the Lord's did not mean that the people of Judah were to sit and do nothing. They were instructed, you need not fight in this battle. Station your, now listen to this, station yourselves, stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. That's in Second Chronicles verse 20, verse 17. They went out, they met their enemy, and the Lord gave them victory as they watched their opponent's alliance fall apart and the former allies attack one another. Now in the New Testament, Jesus encouraged his disciples to have a sword to do battle. Consider the exchange he had with them in Luke 22 verses 35 to 38. It was the night of his betrayal and he was preparing them for life without him. Then Jesus asked them, and I'm quoting now, when I sent you without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. He said to them, but now if you have a purse, take it and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. The disciples said, See, Lord, here are two swords. That's enough, he replied. The disciples were to sell their cloak if they did not have enough money for a sword. They needed to be ready for warfare in the natural. This was a new paradigm for them because they had seen Jesus provide for and protect them supernaturally. While we do not need swords today, we are under a new covenant and the same directive applies to us. Now here's a bonus question. What about guns and ammunition for the believers today? I'm not going to talk about that here. That's for another article, but it is an interesting question. There are instructions in the New Testament that clearly indicate that we have much more weaponry at our disposal than the people of Judah. Paul tells us that perspective is everything. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces, or demons if you like, of evil. We have the armor of God to resist the devil's schemes. We have authority to drive out, bind, and resist demons. 
We will not address it here, but many intercessors also are engaging in spiritual warfare in the second heaven, battling spiritual forces of evil over principalities, countries, uh, churches, and the like. Now, what is the proper response for us? I believe we need to focus on the preponderance of verses in the New Testament and not get distracted by a single sentence in Second Chronicles about the battle being the Lord's. God is for us, Romans 8.31, and yes, he works behind the scenes. He does do battle on our, on our behalf, but we have a role to play also. I have seen too many people who do not understand uh, or believe in the reality of spiritual warfare and are very willing to leave the battle to the Lord. They mistakenly believe that he's going to do it all, that there's nothing they need to do. The people of Judah went out and faced the enemy. They stationed themselves and watch the victory unfold. Many modern believers, I find, will rail against the Lord when, in their view, they have been beaten up by Satan. They are angry because he appeared to abandon them and allowed calamity to unfold in their lives. We are called to do more today against the demonic realm because we have been given more. We are, battled, we are to battle using the revelation, power, authority, and weapons we possess and have inner strength and calm during the storms. We can take hold of this peace of God by trusting him with all our heart. It's in Isaiah 26, 3. We must rest in the Lord, but also do our part by engaging in spiritual warfare against the enemy of our souls. These directives are not uh, mutually exclusive, and I believe they provide the road map to living the blessed and abundant life that Christ has purposed for us as we journey along the path that leads to eternal life, Matthew 7, 14. Let me ask you, do you need help sorting this out? Are you stuck um, in a ditch maybe along the side of the road? Visit our website. We're only a mouse click away and we can help you. God bless you.